The Rode Wireless Go 2 is finally here, and as someone who loves audio and is obsessed with just devices that can make getting great audio even quicker, I'm really excited to tell you about these units. They are awesome. And for $299, it is hard to find something as versatile as this little thing. So let me tell you all about it and where I think it would fit into my workflow. So before I get started with this video, all the audio that you're currently hearing is from my Sennheiser G4 wireless. This is an extremely popular wireless, kind of an industry standard for most people when they're getting into wireless. There are much higher level wireless like Lectrosonics and things, but for the average everyday consumer or prosumer, this is a great unit most people are familiar with. It retails for 600 bucks, so it's a little bit more than the Rode Go, but definitely not as versatile. So when Rode released the first wireless Go, the first version, it was extremely popular because you had an extremely little unit that was able to be used just as a standalone unit with its own built-in microphone, or you could put a lav mic into it. It was super easy to use, very, very small, convenient, battery powered, Everything about it was very well received and very well liked. Once people got their hands on the Rode Go 1, just like me, there started to be all these different ideas of, oh, it'd be really sweet if you had two microphones that could connect to a single receiver for maybe an interview or a talking head thing or something where you could kind of have additional audio sources going into one little receiver. And as all these different comments started to come in, it's almost as though Rode listened to every single one of them because they made this unit basically everything you could ask for in a tiny wireless unit. Here are some of the biggest features you should know about. The first and most obvious thing that makes this unit cool is that there are now two transmitters that go to a single receiver, which means you could have two simultaneous mics running and you could either pair them together into stereo mode so that they both come down the same channel or you could split them directly in the actual receiver itself and make them come down separate channels, channel one on the left, channel two on the right, and mix them in post-production. That's super useful if you're actually having like an interview where two people are talking and they're both using these units because you now have flexibility to switch between them or just pair them together and not worry about doing it in post. In my case, let's say I'm doing a talking head, for example. A lot of times I like to use a shotgun mic of some sort as my main audio, and then having a lav on them might be a really good backup just in case for some reason there, the audio cuts out from one or maybe it just sounds a little bit better depending on the situation. With this unit, if you actually paired this with something like the Rode NTG, which I have, the Rode VideoMic NTG, or maybe even the Rode VideoMic Pro, and did a boom pole over top wirelessly, you could actually be running a boom pole and a lav simultaneously and wirelessly to the camera that you're using and be able to switch with them in post. And that could be a really useful thing because maybe you wanna just hear which audio you like better or maybe one of them works better for a certain type of thing and you can kind of have the adjustability in post to actually switch those, which I think is really, really cool. Another place that could be super convenient is that if you paired that with the dual hot shoe mount that Rode makes, you could have the receiver on one side that is going to a lav with the person, and the other one you could wirelessly have as like an on-camera shotgun mic running wirelessly to the other one. So you could have like a very reliable, nice source of audio directly on the camera, and then a lav on the person that's actually talking. So if you wanted to blend the two, or let's just say they were having an interview with someone simultaneously, and maybe you had the camera getting the nat sound of both of them together, but the lav sound is directly for the person talking, Lots of uses that I think would be awesome. So that's super cool. Two channels into one, very convenient for everyday use. Another thing that I really love about it is the fact that it now has built-in recording in the units themselves every single time that the unit is actually powered up. Now that's an amazing, amazing thing. I will say that from experience with the original Rode Go 1, the reliability in terms of wireless was not exactly what I loved. It worked pretty well most of the time, but occasionally you had some interference and because they are digital wireless, you cannot change frequencies, you can't scan frequencies, you basically are just given whatever it is. So if you get to an area and the wireless signal has tons of interference, there's nothing you can do about it simply because you can't change frequencies. It is what it is. Now what's cool about these is that in the event 
that for some reason you get wireless interference during any sort of talking head dialogue or anything happening, each one of these units has their own internal recording function that you can literally just take the audio directly from the unit, even after the interview, and pair it right with the original file. So when the road detects that there's actually interference of any sort, it will actually make a note in the little, a little marker, I should say, in their actual Rode Central app that you have to download for the computer. And you can see where the wireless actually cut off and you can just pair that audio with just that file right back to the original recording, which would save a ton of headache for people because there's nothing worse than recording in a whole interview and having some sort of wireless interference completely ruin the whole production. Now, one thing to note is you cannot just use this as a standalone recorder. So a lot of people are very used to using something like the Tascam DR10L, which is just basically a tiny unit about this size that just fits in a pocket and records straight to SD card. You cannot use this as a standalone recording unit, which would be kind of cool to be able to do in case you didn't want to worry about wireless at all, but you can at least record directly to these, which is great. Now, hopefully they'll integrate and make the system a little bit better for just being able to grab that file and import it right into your program. Right now, you kind of have to go into the Rode Central app and find the file you're specifically looking for and then download that and then bring it into Final Cut. And it's a little bit more of a hassle than if they just showed up like an SD card that you plugged into a camera and could just choose the file. But hopefully they'll change that sometime soon, maybe in a firmware update. But it's basically recording any time that they are connected. So once these are connected to each other, just like they are now, if you see levels bouncing and you see the little record button right next to it, you basically know that they're always recording and you can always go, go back and just get that file. Now, one of the really unique features about the Rode Go when it came out in the first place is the fact that you can plug a lab into it and use it just like any other wireless, but it also has built-in microphones on it. And you could actually use the unit itself just clipped onto your just talent or whatever, if you put it on a table, whatever you want, and you can use the microphones built in to just record. That is super cool because there are a lot of times that maybe you don't even wanna worry about a lav mic and maybe you just wanna clip this directly on your talent and use this as the lav mic, or maybe put it on the table just out of the shot, or maybe use it in a little bit of an overhead stand if you don't have a boom pole, whatever. Having the flexibility to just use this as a standalone mic is great. And what's cool about it is they added the ability to have a little wind filter on it, just like this. And they had this in the first version of the Rode Go 1, but it kind of was very flimsy and always popped off and was not really reliable in any sort of outdoor environment. Now they made it so that you basically just push this right on here, you turn it and you click it, and then it's not going anywhere at all. So now it's not gonna fall off whatsoever. You have this awesome little unit here that is really good in wind, and you can clip it on anything and just have really good sound. Another really cool feature they added into these units that just when you thought they kind of have thought about everything, they decided to allow these to be plugged directly into a computer via USB-C, and they show up just like any other audio input device, and you can actually use every bit of the same functionality for something like a Zoom meeting, or even a FaceTime call, or some sort of recording directly into your computer. So if you suddenly had a lab and you wanted to have a Zoom meeting, you could just plug this in, plug your lab into here, just talk like you normally would, and you now have this show up as an actual audio input device on your computer, which is amazing. You can also do the exact same thing with your phone or iOS device. You plug this right in with the lightning connector, and this is now the audio input for anything you're doing on the phone. That's an amazing, amazing tool for someone who maybe uses their phone as their main camera, and maybe they record interviews or something just basic to be able to get you know, some better audio out of it, rather than having to hook up a wired unit or having to have some sort of crappy Bluetooth connection for it. You get a very good wireless running to that, and you have two mics that can go straight into your phone. When both of the units are connected to any device or camera, you basically have the option to either say that you want each one of these channels to be individual, so channel one, channel two, which would come down the left speaker and the right speaker, and you could allow it to split it up so that you could have individual control of them. Or if you wanted to eliminate any of the post-production needed for it, you could simply hold down these two buttons directly on the receiver, and once you see that it switch from two levels to one, 
you basically then are merging these together. So you would not have flexibility in post to change what's happening, but you would be able to have these both paired together as one unit, which might be better for some situations. But if you just hold that down again and split them, you'll see that it will say channel one and channel two now have their own individual levels. And you then have all the capability in post for that. Also directly on the receiver, you can see the battery life for both transmitters as well as the main unit, which is a really handy little thing because you can see if one's suddenly going dead, that's something you can't even do on the Sennheiser wireless. So being able to kind of see what your battery levels are and what the wireless status is of how good the connection is as well as whether it's recording, you can see the DB that the mic is set at. It's pretty great. What I do really like about these units as just overall portability and convenience and ease of use is the fact that they all are powered by an internal battery. I think it gets probably about seven hours or eight hours of battery life, but the fact that you can just plug them into a USB-C with like a power bank or even your computer and charge them is great. With the Sennheiser unit, I obviously have to have AA batteries or something that I gotta make sure I bring with me and keep charged. I always have USB-C cables with me. I always have power banks with me or my computer with me or even in my car. And while I'm traveling around, I can just plug these right into a USB-C port on my vehicle and charge these up and that's really Really nice to have. You can also charge the units while you're actually using them if you decide to do that. You'd obviously kind of have an additional cable that you're kind of having to worry about, but in the event that you suddenly forgot to charge them and you needed to charge them simultaneously, you could do that. But no wireless is any good if it doesn't sound good. So let's let you hear what these actually sound like and compare them to the Sennheiser G4 all right, so you're now listening to the Rode Wireless Go 2 directly into the lav. I am using the Countryman B3 lav, the same mic that I was using on the Sennheiser, and I'm curious to see what it sounds like. One thing I noticed in the Rode Go 1 was that it definitely lost a lot of bass from the actual vocal. So I'm curious in comparison whether or not the same thing is actually happening on these, but the unit is very, very small really nice for using as a wireless because it's so tiny and easy to clip on someone's belt. One thing to note about this that I, I wish they could change about the Rode is the fact that it does not have a locking connector for Sennheiser. So it has your standard cable, the same one that the Sennheiser uses, but it doesn't have the locking twist connector, which is a kind of a big deal when you're talking about making sure that it doesn't disconnect when it's in someone's pocket or if you're using these as weddings and you kind of clip it on a priest or a pastor or something, worrying that it gets disconnected is a pretty serious thing. So on the Sennheiser units, you have a locking connector. So you see that when this plugs in here to the actual mic, this twists and it locks on, meaning no matter what happens with the mic, this cannot come apart from the actual unit. So you can reliably trust that when you clip this on someone's belt or something, the only way this is gonna have an issue is either if the battery goes dead or the wireless goes dead. This could be working absolutely perfect, but for some reason, if someone puts it in their pocket and they go to pull something out of their pocket or whatever, and this just disconnects the slightest bit, your audio is gone. And even if the wireless is perfect, and even if you have a great backup audio source like this has, if the microphone gets disconnected from it, you basically don't have the mic and then you're just hearing the mic built in from that. So one thing to keep in mind, I would say that if you're actually doing some sort of um, something that you want to make sure this does not come off, I'd recommend probably having gaff tape with you and just kind of gaffing it nice and tight on here because the last thing you want is for this to come off mid kind of recording and you can't do anything about it. So this is the Countryman B3 plugged into the Rode as a lav source, let's now listen to what it sounds like with just the actual Rode Go itself. So you're now listening to the audio directly from the Rode Go to itself. Now I personally have never and probably will never use it like this. I feel like it just kind of looks a little odd, but it is nice having this as an actual feature because in the event that maybe your microphone stops working, or maybe you don't have the time necessarily to lav someone up. If someone was wearing a black jacket of some sort, like kind of a sport coat or something, you wouldn't see this nearly as much. Obviously it sticks out a lot in this kind of setup based on what I'm wearing, but it is nice having this little unit because you do have it as a nice 
backup reliable source, or maybe even just setting this on the table if you're having like maybe a conference and you're kind of wanting to record a little bit of the overall sound at a table. It is a nice feature, I gotta say. I wouldn't necessarily use it like this, but I know a lot of people that do and it works great for them and that's totally fine because being able to have it as a microphone or an input for a microphone is still really nice. So now you're listening to the mic directly as though it's just right in front of my mouth. Now, I would not necessarily ever hold this unit and talk it like this with a reporter, but Rode does make an actual little mic handle type of setup that you can actually stick this on directly and be able to use it like on the end of a mic. And that could be convenient if you did something with that microphone and put it more in like a little bit of a shotgun setup that's a little bit out of camera, or maybe if you set that little microphone up in front of you or set this microphone in front of you out of camera, you can hear how it still is a very nice quality, very clean quality, would be a huge improvement for something like Zoom meetings, maybe putting this on top of your computer. This would sound way better than obviously the built-in microphones that do come from computers. So it's just a lot of versatility with this unit, which is really nice. Like I said as well, you could also have this and a lav mic simultaneously, so you could switch back and forth between them in the event that you wanted a different sound in post, or maybe you were trying to hear something more in the room in post. It is a nice option to have. And you can hear that the wind reduction is actually pretty good from it. Watch. Do you hear that? Yeah, it's like very minor. Yeah, see, barely. So now we're gonna switch back to the lav mic. One very important thing to know about wireless range is the fact that this is a digital wireless system. So because it's a digital wireless system, you basically get what it is out of the unit and you cannot change frequencies and you cannot do anything to increase the range. Basically, it's connected at all times directly to the unit and it has a shorter range, much, much shorter range than something like this, which is more of a true wireless that runs on certain frequencies. So when you get to a big area like New York City or some sort of populated area, you can scan frequencies for this and find a clear frequency and use something so you hopefully have less interference. This, in the event that you're getting bad wireless interference, there's nothing you can do about it. So that is one factor. Now the great thing though, like I said, you may get some wireless interference every once in a while with here as well, and when you get it with this unit, you don't have a backup. This having that internal recording thing is almost like a better advantage to me. A little bit less wireless, it may have more interference, but having a quality backup that's hardwired essentially to the unit, to me, I'd choose all day over something that is wireless only, that if I have an interference issue, I don't get a chance to fix it. But what kind of range are we talking about? Let me show you. Okay, so we are outside now to do a little bit of a range test between the mics. I now have both microphones on. So right now you're listening to the Rode Go Wireless 2, and right now you are listening to the Sennheiser Wireless G4. So I'm gonna start walking away and we'll get a feel for what kind of range you can expect from both of these devices. So here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start walking away here. And as I walk, it's, I'm really bad with judging distance to get a feel for how far away I actually am, but I'm gonna start walking away from the camera. Now, I have used a wireless enough to know kind of what I expect my range to be from both devices, and I would say that the Rode Wireless Go usually is pretty reliable up to about 150 to 200 feet. So I can't say exactly how far away I am right now, but I'd assume I am in the vicinity of 150 feet away, 200 feet away just far enough to hear that car. And I will just continue to walk away here and I'm just walking and talking to the cameras. Now, I'm waiting for Allison to give me a cue that it's disconnected and it's still doing a great job and I am much further. So it's just starting to cut out now. She is waving her hand and letting me know. So, now I've probably already cut out on the road go, but we should be able to switch in post. And now you should be hearing no problem, that same audio file, and we are now reconnected to it. So, with the Sennheiser G4, I should be able to walk a much stronger distance away and have no issues going this far. I'm a decent amount away. I probably would never test it further than this anyway, but you can see that I'm still getting signal. So once again, I'm not even connected at all right now to the road go. Allison is going to raise her hand when she hears me, so Ben, make sure you tell her when she hears me to raise her hand. And once it reconnects to her unit, I'm basically going to be able to just reconnect back to wireless and have no issues. So 
I will say it's convenient being able to do that and have that unit reconnect. So now she's saying I'm starting to get a little bit more connected and now I should be back on wireless just fine. But could I continue using it the whole time I was walking away? I'm gonna show you what that process might look like if all goes as planned. One of the things that I use the Rode Go a lot for is a setup just like this. Super simple and a wireless boom pole setup. I'm using my Rode NTG video mic running right into my Rode Wireless Go 2, running straight to the camera. And it's a wireless boom pole setup that you can quickly set up and use and not have to worry about running a cable to it. And the range is always plenty good enough in some sort of studio environment like this where you're not worrying about it moving around like crazy. And I find this super useful. I use this all the time in videos because it's so much easier than having to worry about setting up XLR cables and my other shotgun mics and running them into the camera. This is just so much more quick and convenient to use. And because the unit itself is so tiny, you can see how it's basically just hanging on from the cable. It doesn't have any weight, so you're not worrying about pulling on the cable, and it just works really, really well. You could even do a setup like this with a basic mic stand and just get it high enough that it's out of the shot. You don't even need a boom pole, and then you're talking about like a $600 fully wireless boom pole setup with just a mic stand, a video mic pro or a video mic NTG, and the wireless go super convenient. And because you have those two units, if you wanted to switch right to a lav mic that someone was wearing and you had this as well as a lav mic, now you have two units, two audio sources right into the camera, all for the same exact cost. So let me show you how those files reconnect to themselves when we are outside and the wireless cuts out. But I have now imported all the files directly from the units that I just brought in. And I can now show you how you can basically just take where I had wireless interference outside and instantly just sync back up the wired audio that was directly to the actual unit. Built in recorder, super convenient. Let me show you what that looks like. So as you see, if I have the unit plugged in, I can open up this Rode Central app and you now see that all the things that I had previously done outside are now right here. You can see them as uncompressed, 22 minutes long and 30 minutes long. Once again, any time it connects to the unit is when it starts recording. So that gap in time is when I actually turned it off to turn on the other unit to show you a test, and then it re-records. Now you can record an uncompressed or compressed sound quality. If you do uncompressed, you get seven hours of recording time. If you do compressed, you get 24 hours of recording time. I highly recommend just doing uncompressed. You get less recording time, but unless you think you'll be doing much longer than seven hours at a time, just try to get the best quality you can while because it just makes more sense if you're going to use it as a backup or more importantly that uncompressed audio probably will sound even better than the actual wired audio so if you wanted to go through the trouble of just importing that you kind of get the idea of a hardwired device in the first place so I'd recommend always just doing uncompressed unless for some reason you know you're going to do something way longer than seven hours. It automatically deletes the oldest things. So if you record a bunch of different shoots over the course of a bunch of days, once you hit that limit, it doesn't fill up and stop recording. It just deletes the oldest recordings. So that's at least nice because most likely unless you're doing one event that's seven hours long, you're going to just always have it recording so you're safe. But as you can see, I can just click on this and here's all the actual files that I recorded. And you can note that there's these little flags all over the place and flags are markers and they're basically indicated by two things on the receiver itself the person operating the camera can press a button on the unit and it will just put a flag right at that spot so if they wanted to remember something about a content piece or whatever they could just push that or anytime that the actual unit is um has wireless interference it will also put a flag. So you can see here how it has tons of wireless interference. That's when I was outside. And then it's basically just solid red, meaning it didn't have anything at that time. But as you can see, all the audio is going to raise her is still there and working completely fine. So when I hit export, it gives me the options to export it as a WAV file, an MP3, and I can export the file. And then you see it just shows up right on my desktop here as an actual file. And then when I go into Final Cut, all I do is just like any other syncing, I sync up that audio file with the previous camera recording. And then you basically have perfect audio, even if you had wireless interference. 
So who is this mic specifically for? I really feel like this is kind of a really great overall like Swiss Army knife type of unit that like any filmmaker should have. I look at it as though something I could use all the time for even my own YouTube vlogs or maybe random interviews I have or even random podcasts that I have with someone where I just want an extra mic handy or when I am doing stuff for even my commercial production company, being able to have this just in the bag in case I need another mic or even a main mic. It's a great, great little unit that I think is hard to beat for $300. This unit, the G4 is $600. And while I think it's a little bit more reliable from a wireless standpoint, you don't get some of those other features that could be a big deal depending on the type of work that you're doing. So I think it's hard to beat this little unit for the price. Now, is this gonna be something that's gonna be in Hollywood sets and gonna be in TV production? No, it's not designed for that at all. Electrosonics and some of the very high-end wireless companies obviously have much, much better wireless than these units do. But this is a $300 unit that is incredible for the price point. So yeah, this was kind of a big in-depth video about these units, but I think that they're a really, really great little unit. I think they are just a Swiss Army knife type of unit. Because of that hard wire recording, you get reliability of a wired unit, but the convenience of wireless when you're using it, you get those dual channels to be able to record multiple people at once. You get a really handy, tiny little battery powered device that you can use for just about anything. And I think that this is gonna be a really, really awesome unit for Rode. I hope they do well with it. Um, they didn't pay me to say any of this kind of stuff. They did send me these things and I literally asked them to send it to me because I had so much success with all the other Rode units that I knew this was gonna be awesome and I wanted to tell more people about it. So they do not pay me, but they are an awesome, awesome company. So I'm happy to speak highly about them. And if you know me, you know that audio matters to me. So I wouldn't tell you about a unit audio base that I didn't think was good because I care about good audio and I think this is a tremendous little unit. Thanks for watching as always. This is long. I try to go as in-depth as I can, but if you like these long in-depth videos, make sure you uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, tell me what you like, tell me your biggest takeaways, and are you gonna get one? Rode, you've done it again. Another very powerful, powerful little unit. Thanks for watching.